Hey there fellow adventurers, I am Sunshade and today we're gonna talk about simming, why simming is important and why you hear about it in every DPS or gearing guide you run into. World of Warcraft is a complex game which can be played at different difficulties depending on your interests and skill and simming or simulating your character is a big part of improving your damage or healing output by optimizing your stats through gear, enchants, gems, embellishments, and consumables. Simming helps you pick the ones that are not only the best for your class and spec, but also for your specific character. While there are lists of best in slot items for each class for varying situations like single target, cleave, and AoE scenarios, not all the players have the exact same items and talents, and this affects their stat weights. Stat weights themselves are important due to caps and breakpoints. For example, your class might like haste way more than mastery, and mastery more than crit or versatility. But that doesn't mean that you should go for all the haste you can get and ignore the other stats. Think of it as eating only one food for the rest of your life. You won't get the nutrients your body needs. You need variation, proteins, vitamins, and so on. So what do you do when you don't know what stat or item is good for you? you sim your character. And you should always keep in mind that every time you change a piece of gear, a different stat might become better than what you previously needed, especially when swapping between single target and AoE situations. Simulating is the best way to min-max your character per fight type, and it's way faster and more reliable than good old training dummy testing, which is also not super exact due to the large amounts of RNG present in the game. Simulation tools like Simulation Craft, Raid Bots, or Questionably Epic take all the mechanics, RNG, spell interactions, buffs up time, consumables, and fight types into account and provide an analysis of the best possible results your character is capable of with perfect play. Today we are going to focus on how to use the Raid Bot website for simming characters for DPS gains, and in the future, I will probably make a related guide for healers on using the Questionably Epic website, but if you understand raid bots, Questionably Epic is pretty much the same thing. Unfortunately, we cannot sim for survival for tanks, only for DPS, and augmentation evokers are a whole different story. Sorry guys, not yet. Both websites, Raid Bots and Questionably Epic, are very well built and incredibly user-friendly. Before opening RaidBots.com, I do recommend importing the SimCraft add-on from CurseForge or whatever tool you prefer to simplify your character imports into the websites. In some cases you can import from Armory, but this will heavily impair your choices in simulating unless you go into advanced simming where you can add details manually. But if you know how to do that, you probably wouldn't be watching this guide. So download SimCraft, log into the character you wish to sim, Make sure you have the correct talent set selected in order to use less iterations in the sim. Type slash sim C into the chat box and press enter. This will open a box with your character details, gear, talents, bag items, currencies, and so on. It should all be already selected. Press Ctrl C to copy it and then open your browser to the raidbots.com website. Here you have various options depending on what you wish to check. So let's start with top gear which is also the one you should use the most. Press it and paste your character data in here. The site will update with all of the items and talents you currently have on you and in your bags, including your unclaimed Great Vault rewards, so don't pick your Vault rewards before simming. From here on out, you just have to choose all the items you want to compare, but here at the bottom you will see a number of iterations you have available. Without a premium account, you will have 300,000 iterations available per sim, which is more than enough for most players and even if it isn't, you can run as many sims as you wish. So you can run a couple of items in the first one, pick the best choices, equip them, then import the new data with the new changes and sim the other items until you get the best possible choices and then run a final sim just to confirm or just buy a premium account and run all the items you can dream of, saving you a lot of time and energy and skipping this pesky queue. FYI, trinkets and rings eat up most of the iterations and simming for AoE or replacing your gems and enchants makes the sim insanely slow if you run too many iterations at once, so we'll also discuss how to avoid that in some cases. Now back to the choices. 
pick all of the items you want to sim, the catalyst charges you have, or add them manually to sim for the future when you will have the charges. Add as many currencies as you wish in order to compare the best quality items, and make use of this plus sign to modify the items however you like. Add sockets, upgrade the item level, catalyze them, changing their stats or turning them into tier. The plus sign is also very good for removing your current enchants and gems if you want to try new ones as it will help you bypass pressing the replace gems and enchants button I mentioned earlier, which would make the sim take a very long time. For the enhancements part, the best ones are shown by default, but you can click here to show all if you want to pick the lower ranked ones as well, if you want to compare or if you just can't afford the top ones. Add socket slots here and choose which stat gems you want if you want a specific one. Lower, you can choose between different talent sets you saved in game in the Blizzard default loadout. If you use an add-on like Talent Loadout X, those talent choices will not show, only the active ones and the ones you save with the baseline interface. However, you have the option to add a custom loadout and choose whichever talents you want to compare, but remember, it's best to sim single target talents for a single target sim and AoE talents for an AoE sim for the best results. Which brings us to simulation options. Here you can choose between different fight styles from patchwork, which is single target and no movement, to light movement, heavy movement, add cleave, dungeon slice and so on. You can also change the number of bosses you are fighting and the fight length where it is available. For single target I generally go for 5 minute patchwork fights and for mythic plus I still choose the patchwork but I change the number of targets to 5 or 6. The SimCraft version can be weekly, meaning it has weekly updates to the tool, nightly, providing recent nightly updates with some bugs here and there, or latest, updated very often, but also with the highest chance of bugs. Here you can also tweak trinket or embellishment uptimes. For example, the blue silk and lining embellishment is only active while you are above 90% health, which will not be the case 100% of the time, so you can lower the uptime to a more realistic percentage depending on the content difficulty and your team's skill. Add or remove consumables, raid buffs, etc. Once you are done choosing all the options you wish, press the Find Top Gear button and wait for the results. Congratulations, you just did your first sim. The next option you will probably be using after Top Gear is the Droptimizer, which does exactly what it sounds like. It shows you the best item drops for your character from various sources. You can run a droptimizer from the raid and choose the difficulty level and the upgrade level of gear. You can set the tool to act like you already upgraded all of the gear you are wearing to its maximum available level. You can run a droptimizer per dungeon, or if you run a premium account, you can sim for all dungeons all at once. But even without a premium account, you can also check for crafted gear, mythic zero drops, world content stuff like world bosses, the catalyst, rifts, dream surges, or whatever event we may be getting in the future. You can tweak all the available choices by difficulty, upgrade level, and you can add sockets to the gear. Remember to always read the notes and limitations at the bottom of the page for more info. The quick sim and gear compare parts work pretty much the same way, each focusing on different information you may be interested in with Gear Compare being a great tool for comparing items you don't have yet, either drops or crafted items, basically whatever you want to compare against by adjusting their details over here. You can easily find out more about these and the ones we already discussed on Raidbot's own support page. Always remember that sims are going to be higher than your DPS output as they simulate almost perfect play so don't be discouraged by the differences, because by simming you have already taken the first step towards improving, and that's the most important thing in my book. I truly hope this guide has been helpful to some of you guys in answering some questions, and if you still have some questions related to simming, let me know in the comment section below, I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more WoW content from this channel, and if you want to hang out once in a while when I'm streaming live, maybe do a dungeon or a raid together, you can also find me on Twitch at the address showing on screen. Catch you in the next one, bye!